question three. Okay, this one is about forces. Um, you can see we've got the swimmer here and we've got the horizontal forces act on the, on the swimmer. So this is going to be about forces um, acting in a straight line. And this is a resultant force diagram. Um, and you can see that the idea here is that the, the forces look as though they're balanced, but uh, we can't tell if there are any numbers on there. Uh, we can actually, because part I says the swimmer is moving at a constant speed. So you only get a constant speed when the resultant force equals zero newtons. So basically, if the forwards force and the backwards force are the same, so let's say that was 100 newtons, that one would be 100 newtons, because 100 minus 100, because the force is acting on the directions, is equal to zero newtons. If you get that, you'll have a constant speed. So, force T is 120. What is the, fire, the size of force D? So we can draw that out. So force T is the forward force. So it's the force in this direction. So T is 120 newtons. It says that the speed is constant. So therefore, force D must be, in order to have a resultant force of zero newtons, it must be 120 minus 120, which to give us zero. So force D is 120 newtons. By increasing force T, 240 newtons, the swimmer accelerates to a higher speed. Calculates the size of the initial res resultant force acting on the swimmer. So initial is you know, at the start. So we could draw this diagram out. So it says force T, so that was that way, went to 140 newtons. And we know that force uh, D uh, was originally 120 newtons. So we would do 140 minus 120, leaving us 20 newtons. 20 newtons. Even though the swimmer keeps the force T constant at 140, the resultant force in the swimmer decreases to zero. Explain why. So this is the, um, the diagram I've drawn here is, is the initial um, but what will happen is that the, it will be 140 in the opposite direction. So we need to explain, and remember that is to say, say why. It says why next to it, but that's what it means. So why does it become 140? Well, if we think about this, if we go back to our picture of our swimmer, as they move forward, the swimmer is hitting water particles as they move through the water. And the faster the, the swimmer goes, the, the, the more water particles they hit every second. And we call that the, the drag force. You know, air resistance is a drag force, and water resistance is a drag force. So by increasing their speed, they increase their drag force. So that's what happens here. So um, we just need to say something like, you know, for three marks, um, so as the swimmer uh, moves faster through the water, they collide with more water particles causing the drag force to increase. Let's see, we've got three marks and we needed to um, explain why the resultant force goes to zero. So as the swimmer moves faster, so probably one mark there for saying they're now moving faster, uh, they collide with more water particles, causing the drag force to increase. Good, too much, but we haven't said why it gets to zero um, uh, increase until the force of um, D. D is equal to the force of T. All right, because if it's zero result on the force, D and T must be equal. All right, that now explains 
why we have a uh, overall result of loss of zero okay long thing to read sports scientist investigated how the force exerted by swimmer's hand against the water affects the swimmer's speed so they are looking at uh, changing force and looking at how that changes the speed um, okay so in terms of this question it, it's a it's about an investigation so we can um, we can we can say we can we can work out what the, the different variables are so uh, they looked at how the force exerted so that, that's what they changed so that's going to be the independent um, against uh, the water affects the swimmer's speed so they're looking uh, so how did changing the independent variable how does that change the dependent that's what that's what you measure the investigation involved 20 males and 20 females swimming a fixed distance so fixed distance that is a control variable sensors placed on each swimmer's hand measure the force 85 times a second over the last 10 meters of the swim again both control variables the measurements we use to calculate an average all right so we've got 85 measurements in order to calculate an average so that's that's a very reliable measurement and um, you know in science we normally say take at least three readings so they've taken 85 so they've gone over and above um the measurements we use to calculate an average force the average speed of each swimmer over the last 10 meters of the swim are also measured the date of the investigation the investigation is displayed on the graph okay so we can see that the males are the, the crosses and the females are the uh the dots with the circle around them what was the dependent so dependent is the one that is measured and changes based on the independent so in this graph we can see that the change of the average force that's what we said is the independent and the dependent variable was the average speed of the swimmer so it's the average speed of the swimmer explain one advantage of measuring the force 85 times every second rather than just once or twice what well, we said it, um, it's going to give you more data so more data points will produce a more reliable mean or oh. they used the word average didn't they in their um when they were talking about it here they, they said average rather than mean so we'll we'll use their word as well so more data points will produce a more reliable average uh two marks yeah more data reliable give one way in which data for the male swimmers is different from that of the female so let's have a look at the graph okay Maybe about there. So we can see that the there's a sort of a cutoff, isn't there, around here. There's no female past that point, and there is no male past that point. So that's our sort of mid area. And then all of these over here are male, and all of these over here are female. So you know, we could say that in terms of one way the data is different, so male. Um, athletes. Oh no, sorry, there is one. Oh no, there isn't. I thought, I thought I saw a little circle there, but it's not. So all of the, um, not all of, but most of the male athletes produced higher forces than the female athletes. You could say vice versa. Most of the female athletes produced lower forces. Um, what's interesting, I suppose, if you look at this, is despite the male and females producing um, different forces, they still manage to swim around the same average speed. So, but that's what we're going to mention. We're going to say most males um, produced um, a larger force. So most male a larger force. 
Considering only the data from this investigation, what advice would you give a swimming coach to give to swimmers who want to increase their average speed? Well, average speed just shows some kind of correlation with um, the average force. So you would tell the swimming coach to ask their athletes to apply more force on every stroke. So apply, oh, jumped around a little bit. There we go. Uh, you would tell them to apply more uh, force to each stroke. Okay, end of that one.